If you're ready to experience more peace and joy in your life, if you want to feel more comfortable in your own skin, and if you're ready to discover and expand on your energetic gifts and personal power, you're in the right place. So here's your host, Kelly Sparta. Welcome back to Spirit Guides. I'm your host, Kelly Sparta, transformational shaman and spiritual business coach. I'm here as always with my best friend in Bouquette, Catherine Loranger. Loranger. I will get it right. Uh, Loranger. Hey, Catherine Loranger and uh, (laughs) spiritual business coach as well. And, And we are talking today about to team or not to team that is the question right so hopefully not so much as hamlet right (laughs) right (laughs) that'd be bad we're not doing that that's bad yeah so yeah so you know when we look at our business there are a multiple there are a multitude of things to consider when you consider bringing on team members and you know the this is one of those things i'm actually it's it's very interesting because this this applies both to for-profit and non-profit organizations right i am in the middle of helping the local theater group create structure that will allow us to bring in volunteers and assign them tasks and that's that's basically creating a team, right? So I'm in the middle of doing this right now. So this is really up for me. And so I'm going to talk about it from that perspective. And then we can also talk about it from a for-profit perspective. But, you know, when you're a solopreneur, you are the the CEO and the chief bottle washer. I mean, you are (laughs) A to Z, you're doing it all, right? But at some point you want to bring in additional staff, if only to take the lower dollar tasks off of your plate, right? And so, you know, when we're when we're looking at where do we hire, we are not going to be hiring for the things that only we can do, obviously, right? Ultimately, the goal is to get to the point where you are only doing the things that only you can do, right? And so that's where we bring team into play. Now, The first thing you have to do before you can define who you want to bring in is you have to lay out what are all the tasks to be done and what are the different roles that people would play to do those. And that's what I've been doing. I spent two and a half hours this this weekend just sitting down and outlining stuff for two of our committee chairs out of like six, right? Because it takes a lot. And okay, here's what the committee chairs do. Here's what the sub volunteers underneath those committee chairs do you and here are the individual tasks that each person will be responsible for and then from that we can recruit in to those roles now that people know what's expected of them right now but but before you can recruit somebody into those roles even with the tasks laid out you have to have procedures right standard operating procedures in order for people to know what how they're supposed to accomplish their task right? Now, this is the biggest problem that I experience with people who are just starting to bring on board new team members, and that's that they are control freaks. And it is either their way or it's all screwed up. And, or the opposite side of that is, oh, here, here's your thing, figure it out. I'm going to be over here somewhere. And then they abdicate responsibility for the task and they abdicate supervision of the task even. And so there's a balance. You, you need to not be micromanaging, but you also need to not be abdicating. It is your company and it is still your responsibility to make sure everything gets done, right? Now, the thing that we've been talking about in the, the organization is when you hand over a task, a group of tasks, an, an operation to somebody, you also have to give them the authority to do it, which means you can't, once you've got the, the procedures and stuff in place, you can't be micromanaging. If they do it in a way that's slightly different than the way you would have done it, but it's still done right according to the structures that you provided them, you don't get to say that's not right. <laughs> You know, you, you need to accept that whoever it is, is going to put their personal stamp on it and they're going to get it done in a way that is, is appropriate. Now, you know, if it's, if it's really wrong, then that's a problem, right? 
But if it's, if it's within the values of the organization and if it's within the structure that you gave them and there's nothing technically wrong with it, but you'd like it to be slightly different because it's not exactly how you would have done it. Well, you know, okay, but they're not you, right? So you, you, can, you can train as you go and help them, but you need to eventually not be micromanaging, right? So <clears throat> this, that nothing will be more destructive to the morale of your team than handing over quote unquote authority and then yanking it back. That is, that is demoralizing and it causes people to go into professional helplessness where they just go, well, just tell me what you want me to do because I obviously I can't do it right. So you just tell me, and then you end up doing it yourself. And this is what happens when you over manage. Now, when you under manage, what happens is things start going out and then people start saying stuff and you start going, oh, wait, that's not right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and it's already out and the job is already done and, and the damage is already done if you're not supervising at all. And so, you know, there's, that's the opposite side of the coin where you're just like, oh, wait a minute, what happened? Right. So, you know, when we hire, we have to be aware that these are things that are going to happen. Right. <clears throat> now, before we hire, we need to think about whether or not we want to hire. Because if you know that you are going to micromanage the crap out of things and nothing's ever going to be perfect unless it's exactly as you would do it, then don't hire somebody. Just do it. But know that you will limit your growth of your business based on that. And, you know, then there's the whole question of hiring versus contracting, right? So I've been sort of monologuing here. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, I have a lot to say on this topic, but you know, feel free to jump in wherever you want there, Catherine. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Kelly. I'm just kind of going to my happy place. I'm like, oh, I no, 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 no. Like, that's okay. It's all good. <laughs> so so be before I, uh, so much to say about this, such an important know, topic. And before I do, I, we were looking at some of the listener analytics and noticed that we've got a number of people tuning in from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. So I want to give a shout out to those people. I actually used to live in Fort Saskatchewan. I moved from Fort Saskatchewan to Panama. So hello, hello to the Edmontonians and Canadians. And of course, all of the listeners tuning in from all over the world. So just so appreciate all of you. Love you, love you, love you. So with the, with the team, like, you know, Kelly and I were talking about this before we hit record and all of what we cover on the Wednesdays, really, it, it aligns together, right? That's why it's called a line. It's like we're theming these things throughout every week. And one of the one of the things that's kind of coming up for me is the difference between working on your business and in your business. So if you are so consumed with being in your business, feeling like you're the one that has to do everything, you are not, you're going to move to burnout. You're, you know, you're going to be overstressed. You're going to limit your growth but you're not going to be able to give yourself the time to really work on. And the working on is where you're identifying what is the dollar value of the tasks I'm doing. So you're doing this kind of meta analysis. And I, I have my clients actually track for a couple of weeks. We've got a spreadsheet and they track every single thing they do. And what's the dollar amount of that task, right? Are you getting bogged down and doing $5 an hour, $10 an hour, $15 an hour tasks. And like Kelly said, like there are things in your business that you and only you can and should be doing. And so doing that, that first of all, that kind of analysis to figure out where am I spending my time? What is the dollar value on that task? And then coming to a decision point, am I okay with this or am I not? Am I happy with how my business is going? Or would I like something different? And if you want something different, then you're going to need to do something different, right? That they, there's that saying that, you know, definition of crazy is doing the same thing and expecting a different result. So it starts with that analysis of what, okay, what am I doing? And then the vision of your business, like what would you love your business to look like as part of your life? So it's not just about you're working 24 seven, but your business is, it's an expression of your creative, you know, talents and abilities and skills and, you know, ideally it, how you serve the world. If you're listening to this podcast, you're a conscious entrepreneur. So of course there's a, there's a huge part of your Dharma, your purpose, your mission in what you're doing in your business. 
but the business is part of an overall well-lived life. And so it's that vision of what does my business look like if I could really create anything that I want? And for some people, it's going to be, it's just me. I would love that. For some people, it's going to be, I have a couple of people supporting me. I would love that. For some people, it's a team of, you know, 50 or 20 or whatever that is. And so knowing that whatever that is, is right for you. So identifying what are all of those tasks that you're spending your time on. And then like Kelly said, looking at the vision of your business, and then what are all of the role functions required to grow that business? So you might even do an org chart, organizational chart. And at the level of fact, when you're starting out, it's probably going to be, you know, CEO, me, director of marketing, me, janitor, me, sales, me, customer service, me, delivery, me, like it's going to be you filling all of those roles. But when you start to separate and get that image, then you can really get an idea of, okay, what are the really critical ones to fill first. So looking at what are those low hanging fruit, low dollar, right? Low value items that you could do that you can systematize, that you can process. There's lots of ways you can do it. You can, I mean, you could literally just screen record yourself doing the task on your computer, talking about it as you're doing it, and then send it to a VA to write an SOP for it. Like there's lots of simple, simple ways to do it. However, it is that decision and that level of letting go of attachment, as Kelly was talking about, and then also the support, you know, showing up, it re- it's going to require you to show up differently as a leader when you're bringing in that team. And, and I mean, we haven't even talked about the metaphysical team either. So there's like right. phys- the physical team and there's also metaphysical team. Yeah. So I, I want to jump in here because the, the team that you hire. So you lay out all your tasks and whatever else. And, and, you know, a lot of people will say, well, hire for the lowest dollar value things first. And that's doable. But I would say that for me, what I did was I said, what do I hate the most? Mm. Because energetically, I increase my vibration when I let go of the tasks that I hate doing the most. Mm -hmm. And so I hired tech first because Mm -hmm. it wasn't the lowest dollar amount by far, but it was the thing that drove me craziest, right? Mm -hmm. It took, it took time. It gave me frustration. It messed with my energy and my vibration and all the stuff. Right. And then I hired the, the, the VA, right. To, to do all the menial tasks, you know, love that, love that, love that, love all of that for just freaking like love beams all over that Kelly. Yeah. And yeah. so, you know, it was, for me, it was, it was letting go of the things that, that, that limited me, right. Because we mm-hmm. want our energy and our business to be unlimited. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, when you get frustrated, when you get, get like upset and, and bogged down, that's when your energy is not unlimited. And so when we're looking to outsource our tasks, we want to look at the things that, that drag our energy down first. But and, all, and also, and you, you said this already too, but not outsourcing or abdicating responsibility, right? So right. I can see it's happening where it's like, I hate to do this. So I'm going to outsource it. But along with that, I'm just outsourcing all accountability and responsibility for that. So you don't like, you need to retain the power yes. and the responsibility for it. Yeah. So for me, I hired a website company because I'd been hacked a couple of times and I was managing my own website and that was just stupid. You know, <laughs> like why would I do that? Right. It's not what I do. And so I was like, ah, I'm done with this. And so I, I outsourced to them and, you know, I get an X number of hours a, a month, which is typically more than enough for me to get everything I need done, done. And I can just write what I want and throw it in their, their website and say, make a page for this. <laughs> And then I go in and, and all I have to do is say, change this picture, you know, rearrange this. It doesn't look right on mobile or whatever. Right. So I'm still engaged with it, but I'm not actively creating pages and doing links and all the other blech that comes with that. Right. Cause there's people who love to do that and are like really good at that. Right. So f- like, what are the things that only you can do and that you excel at? Right. Mm -hmm. And so when we think of to team or not to team, right, you know, one of the things that I tell people is if you're hiring like a virtual assistant, right, oftentimes 
depending upon your business, but in many cases, you're going to want to hire in, in stages, right? So you, when I used to train real estate agents back in the day, I used to tell them, look, because you had to buy an assistant, you had to hire a full-time assistant. And I'd say, look, you always have to hire before you can afford to hire because you won't have enough business coming in because you're too busy doing those tasks, right? And depending on your business, that may be true. In today's world, in the world of virtual assistants, it's really not as true as it used to be because you can only hi you can hire somebody virtual for, you know, 10 hours a week or 20 hours a week or whatever. And you can sort of upgrade as you need more, more help, right? <clears throat> but you may, in fact, depending upon your business, be in that position. And so you want to consider if you're right on the edge and you're like, I just can't quite afford the hire but you're doing a lot of the tasks that they would be hiring and, and you're, you're actively doing and you know how to bring in business. If that's true, then hire them. And with the time they save you, you will have the money to, to pay for them because you'll be doing more activities that bring in sales, right? And that's the key is you've got to make sure that if you're going to do that, you better be focused on doing the activities that bring in sales so that you have the, the income to offset, right? And then from there, boom, your business can explode. So now some people don't like to be responsible for other people. And if that's the case, then I would highly recommend contracting rather than hiring. An employee is a bigger burden on you, both from a tasking perspective and from a, uh, a paperwork perspective than is a contractor. So in fact, I have zero employees in my business. I am a pass-through LLC, and therefore even I am not an employee in my business. <laughs> so, <clears throat> you know, everybody who works for me is contractors and that makes life easy for me because, you know, I don't have any employment law issues I have to deal with. I can outsource to different various contractors. If, I, if I'm unhappy with a contractor, I just end the contract and start with somebody else. You know, it's, it's super flexible and super easy for me. And, you know, I work with people in other countries and work with them that way. And if I were employing them, that would be a lot of paperwork, but because I am contracting them, it is not a lot of paperwork. Mm -hmm. So I can take advantage of the difference in market value of a person who works in the U S versus a person who works in Pakistan or Philippines or India or something like that. And so I can make use of different contractors based on how much, how much I need from them. Right. So I, I, I pick and choose different people based on what's going on. Like, and you have to know the culture of the, of the country that you're contracting in, if you're going to contract out of the country. So like India, the, the custom there is they, they're not going to tell you a problem that there's a problem unless you ask them if there's a problem. So you need to know that. I don't like to outsource to India for that reason, because I'm usually very busy and I don't have time to ask every three seconds if there's a problem, right? So mm -hmm. I tend to, to contract to either Pakistan or the Philippines because I get more active feedback from the, those cultures, right? And so, you know, you just need to know the culture of the, the country that you're contracting in so that you know what, what is expected of you. In the Philippines, the expectation is that you're going to get you're going to give the, if you hire them year round, that they get a 13th month worth of pay uh, at, in order for the holidays, right? So you need to know that when you go in, they don't tell you, <laughs> but that's, that's a cultural expectation. So you need to know that too. And, and of course, this is very industry specific, right? And yeah. it's dependent on if you're brick and mortar or if you're online. And so, it, you know, there can be benefits to hiring employees in terms of retention and long-term loyalty and things like that. But it, it really, it's, it's so industry and business specific and always, 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 you know, talk to your accountant or a tax professional to find out what's the best the best option for you. And, and I know for us in, you know, kind of in, in a previous business, I had a mix of contractors and employees. So employees are those kind of like core people that are with you long-term. And then, you know, for bigger projects, we would just kind of like bring in, you know, 50, 60 contractors to assist with project delivery. And then it's just kind of easy when it's complete. 
So yeah. really, yeah, it really is, is business specific. Yeah. And I'm going to say, don't go with the lowest price all the time. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. So usually the, you get what you pay for, right? Mm-hmm. So being that I am not physically located in the U S anymore, I actually pay for a U.S.-based virtual assistant, which cost me a lot more than it would cost me if I went overseas. But some things I need, I need a U.S. physically based person for. So, for instance, when Verizon decided to shut down my phone service, I needed somebody who could receive the new phone and activate it in the U.S. before it could be mailed to me again. Right. So, you know, things like that. Super helpful to have somebody in the US for. So, nice. and because of that, you know, I, I keep somebody who is in the US as my assistant. So, and that will be uh, ongoing. So, and I you wanna, know, yeah, go ahead. So, I was just going to say it's also, you know, when you're looking at bringing on a team member or a team, I think it's really important to have a sense of your values as an individual and a business. So what do you stand for? How do you want to operate? What, you know, what are those things that are really key that you're aligned with in, in terms of who you're bringing in? So not just in terms of business practices, but are there, you know, kind of energetic alignments that are really key for you? Safety, trust, like there's there's so many aspects. I can think about a client who they have two businesses and one business they brought on, I say like six people to their, into their team. And they're all kind of like the work virtually. So that, you know, they're kind of like all over the place. And then the other business that they opened was an actual storefront. And so the, the dynamics that were similar values, but the dynamics were really, really different in terms of how they had to manage those teams and bring those on. So that, you know, knowing for yourself, what are my values? What's key for me? For me, one of my core values is integrity and growth are like my top two. And so how do I see those demonstrated when I'm, you know, asking somebody, you know, what does integrity mean to you? What's the kind of answer I'm looking for that's going to let me know that they have the same vision of that as I do. So knowing that for yourself so that you can have the value alignment as well is I think really key. Yeah, I I absolutely agree. I also <clears throat> highly recommend that you work with people who are who speak the language of your business. So because I'm in a spiritually based business, I need to interview carefully for people who speak fluent spiritual, right? Because having a marketing company that does not understand the spiritual world, but is like, oh, well, we're going to come in. No, totally different sell in the spiritual world than it is in any other world. Um, And the same thing for my virtual assistant. I have somebody who is a life coach. You know, this is what she does. She speaks fluent spiritual. And, you know, the same thing with the, with the website company, it's not as crucial because they're not doing anything other than providing the structure and the colors, which I tell them what I want and they just make it go. So it's not as crucial for that, but you know, that's how these things fly. Right. So, you know, these are, these are pieces and parts that you have to keep in mind as you're going through this process of, you know, do I want to expand? And if I want to expand, how, how am I going to do that? Sometimes, you know, oh. sometimes we can lighten our load by simply removing things that aren't actually producing results. And mm. we don't need to hire a team member. Like I did that earlier this year. I looked at everything I was doing and said, 95% of my business, 98% of my business comes from my po- podcast. I'm only going to do the podcast. Mm-hmm. And, you know, now everything that goes out on social media, everything that goes out on my articles, everything comes from the podcast. And we just, repurpose it. And I'm not doing anything other than that, which has lightened my load dramatically. And I didn't have to hire anybody to fix that. Right. And that's the working on your business, right? Like that's the taking the time to actually look at the numbers and the metrics to be able to make smart decisions. And so if you're tied up in this feeling of this idea that I've got to do it all, or you're addicted to the busy, you're, it's going to be more challenging for you to be able to kind of like actually take a, take a look up and look at what is, what is the thing that's making the difference? Yeah, absolutely true. Yeah. So anything else you want to say on this topic? Mm, teams can be fun. Teams can be messy. Teams, bring on team member is going to make you grow. It's definitely a growth opportunity for you as well. It can be, there can be potential for triggering. 
in, mm-hmm. in its best. It's going to require you to elevate how you show up for your business and for yourself. Um, yeah. Yeah. So pros and cons, pros and cons for sure. Yep. So yep. keep these things in mind. Mm-hmm. And that's what we have time for for this week. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share. And remember what you focus on is what expands. What you intend is what you create. So choose wisely. We'll see you next time. Ciao, ciao. So that's it for today's episode of Spirit Guides Podcast. Head on over to iTunes, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen and subscribe to the show. Every week, one lucky listener who subscribes and posts a review on iTunes will be entered into a drawing for a $10,000 value grand prize and a private reading with Kelly Sparta herself. Be sure to head on over to spiritguidespodcast.com and pick up a free copy of Kelly's gift and join us on the next episode. Show of the